Well, good morning, lovely ladies and gentlemen. Steve Collins coming to you from beautiful, cloudy San Antonio, Texas, the second most powerful, passionate, and purposeful coach and speaker in the world. Hope you guys are fired up and ready for this fantastic Friday. I begin this session, if you will, with the question that changed the course of my life 20 years ago. I begin this with the question that changed my life 20 years ago. And as I'm reflecting on this, the reason I'm bringing this up is I am wondering who out there may be at a place in their life that they are faced with an extreme decision that could absolutely tank and crater your life or give you the life you've always dreamed of or believe that was possible for you. I don't know who is at a crossroads this morning. You know, I know somebody is at a crossroads this morning. As you know, my heart is every day. For the last two and a half years, I've been creating a live video every morning with the intention of changing one life. Just one life is all I need. If anybody else catches on to it, that's great. I'm looking for one person who maybe is at a crossroads. And here is why I'm reflecting today on this question because I'm on my way with my beautiful bride driving behind me to San Antonio's Platinum Top 50 Realtor event, uh, which we've won before and which we are finalists again, my team here in San Antonio. And I was reflecting this morning on that crossroads that I was at when I had the opportunity to shrink back and stay where I was. You see, uh, my father was in the automotive business. He uh, modified and, and uh, made custom Corvettes. And then he took a job as a body shop manager uh, here in San Antonio for 35 years at North Park Lincoln Mercury. And so we were at the drag races when I was 10 days old. He was a drag racer, drag raced Corvettes, restored Corvettes. So I am a car dog through and through. Sorry about that, y'all hit the bump. I'm a car dog through and through. That's my story. So that's why I'm still into cars today. I love them, they're exciting, they're cool. They represent history for me, relationship with my father for me. It is incredible. And I felt that that was the direction I needed to go in. So in San Antonio, uh, 20 plus years ago, I was at the gun organization, worked my way up in a walk around competition in sales to be the number two in the city, voted on with an award. And I had just had the best month of my life. Got to drive the coolest car, made what I considered at that time to be really good money. And um, the challenge was though, it was about an 80 hour work week. And I was miserable because I was working all the time. I was all the time working. And I was reading a book by a guy named John Mason. And John Mason posed the question that I posed to you in the post this morning. When I was sitting on that showroom floor, worn out, money in the bank, cool car, hey, you're the top guys in the city, blah, 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 yada, yada, whatever. Unhappy. The question was posed to me in that book, what major life decision would you make if God not only guaranteed you that you wouldn't fail, but guaranteed you that you would succeed wildly? And I had sold a lot of cars to realtors and doctors and attorneys, and I saw what was available out there, and I don't mean this in a condescending way, the bar to get into the real estate industry is set about an inch off the floor, you gotta have some money and pass a couple tests, and I just was not impressed with the majority of the people that I met. And I thought, you know what I would do? I would get into real estate. That's what I would do. If God guaranteed me I wouldn't fail and that I would succeed wildly, I would get into real estate. Now, I didn't know anything about real estate 20 years ago. Nothing at all. What I did know was that if my gift was communication and if my heart was to serve others and see them blessed and benefit from the gifts and talents that God gave me, then where could I get the greatest return for the time I take away from my family during the day to bring income into the home? Where's the greatest return financially for me and what arena? And I just thought maybe real estate. I wrote it down in the book, wrote it down. I'd get into real estate, still have the book today. It's very sentimental to me to reflect upon that. And a week later, I sold the car to a man who at the closing of that car sale said, you would be phenomenal in my industry. And I said, I really appreciate that. What industry are you in? And he said, real estate. 
really? Let me show you what I wrote in a book a week ago. I showed him what I wrote in the book and he says, well, I think we need to interview. Do you have any background in real estate? Because I am the sales manager uh, for Sentex Homes here in San Antonio. So lots and lots of houses all over the nation, San, San Antonio especially, but we don't hire anybody from outside of the industry. But I think I'm willing to take a risk on hiring you, Steve Hamilton said to me. And I said, baby, let's do it. And the rest is history. And this morning, 20 years later, I'm going to the Platinum Top 50 Realtor event. By the way, there's 12,000 real estate agents in San Antonio. So you're talking about the best of the best, the elite. These are people who really not only produce at a high level and serve a large number of families, but they're committed to personal growth, ongoing, non-required continuing education and community service. It is a large event put together to honor those people who are bigger than just the money. So I'm thrilled and humbled to be a part of that 20 years later and seeing the course that my life has taken. Now, let me rewind and give you a little bit of uh, info on this. In that theory and in that promise, did I make a million, lose a million? Yep. Did I buy the dream house, lose the dream house? Yep. Did I almost get divorced eight or 10 times because Angela and I were going through so much stress? Yep. Did I trip out and know I was gonna have seven kids? Nope. Did I used to pay my bills when Angela would call me and say there's a pink slip on the front door? Yep. Did I buy one of those T-bar things at Home Depot so I could turn the water on when CPS or saw turn the water off? Yep. Did I tell the kids, hey, the reason we have candles tonight it's because we're going to pretend we're in a cave. It's going to be awesome. We're not going to turn the lights on. It's cool. Yep. Was success for me when I could tell the kids we were putting chicken in the ramen? Yep. You see, there was a season of significant sacrifice on the path to arrive where I am today. And I think about it quite often. I think about it regularly. In fact, as the coach at the number one Keller Williams office in the entire world by way of production, we've already done two bu -bu 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 billion in sales this year. Here's what I know. I tell the initial students coming into the classroom next to Crego, I'm probably the guy that has failed the most out of anybody in this room, in this place. My failure qualifies me to coach you to success because I've stepped on the landmines that you will not have to step on if you'll do what I say. And so I carry those failures with me as a badge of honor on the path, believing in that promise. What one major decision would I make if God not only guaranteed me that I wouldn't fail, but that I would succeed wildly? And ladies and gentlemen, I had the opportunity to take a step of faith or to stay right where I was. And let me tell you, it was scary. There was a sacrifice to make. I had been there long enough. I had three weeks of paid vacation coming up and the training for Centex started on a Wednesday and I was eligible Friday if I had just worked till Friday and he gave me a choice. Steve Hamilton at Centex said, I can't do it. You'll miss three full days of critical training with the other people we've hired. I can't do it. And Angela, I came home that night and I said, babe, we've got about four grand sitting there. I'm two days away from getting that four grand. If we just, but they won't work with this. I mean, Centex is not able to make that change. What do we do, babe? And uh, the reason I'm madly in love with this woman, as I always am, is she said, a very biblical answer. She goes, what if we didn't look at it as a $4,000 loss, but a $4,000 seed of faith we planted, believing this is God's next step for us and trust that the good Lord would give us back a hundredfold return in time. See why I like this girl? She's the smartest woman I know. And ladies and gentlemen, as I said, the rest is history. So I leave you with this question as I get ready to enter this sexy event here today. What one major decision would you make if God guaranteed you not only would you not fail, but you would succeed wildly, and all it takes for you to make that decision is tremendous faith, hard work, and commitment? What decision would you make, I ask you? Think about it. The balance of your life and your destiny hangs in your choice. Have a great day, guys.